some, if beauty and fame brings ideal relationships, then celebrities should have the best friendships. But it is not. Simplicity is the world. Live simply, walk humbly, love generously. Give it all to God. Life is better. is the worst slave driver while faith is the greatest motivator. When you have the faith, that measure of faith that God has given you, God will give you supernatural powers to continue despite. If you seek God, fear cannot stay in your hearts. your servants in this part of this world. Listen, 
He saved me from all my troubles. Amen. For the angel of the Lord is a guard. He surrounds and defends all who fear him. Taste and see that the Lord is good. All the joys of those who take refuge in him. You know, at times like this, let us not magnify our circumstance, but let us magnify our God. Our voices must be louder than our fears. So come on, lift up your voices, lift up your heads to the King of Kings and worship Him.
every tribe and every tongue will confess that you are Lord of all. Oh God, we bring glory to your name. We want to experience, oh God, your presence in this place. Thank you, Jesus.
your throne, oh God. Manahan ka sa aming mga puso, Panginoon. Ikaw ang nagmamay-ari sa aming buhay. As we lift up our hands, together with our voices, Lord, we say unto you, God, that you are worthy nothing can compare, Lord, to your majesty. You are holy, Lord. You are righteous. You are just, oh God. But you are loving and faithful and merciful and gracious. Thank you, Jesus.
Good morning po sa ating lahat. Welcome to our another Sunday celebration. Ngayon po ay makikinig tayo sa salita ng Panginoon. And before we will start the sharing of the word, let us all together pray in your homes, in your seats right now. Maari po bang kung meron kang katabi, kasama mo yung pamilya mo, maari bang hawakan mo ang kanyang kamay and let's pray for one another. Panginoon, nagpapasalamat po kami for giving us another week. Another week wherein we are safe, wherein we have been provided by your grace and by your mercy. Maraming maraming salamat po na meron po rin pong pagkain sa mga hapagkainan namin. Maraming maraming salamat po na hindi po kami nagkakasakit. Maraming maraming salamat sa pagprotect mo sa amin araw-araw. Even Lord God, as we have our travels, Lord, you are there protecting us. As we have our work, you are protecting us along the way and even giving us the peace that passes all understanding in the midst of these great trials that we are in right now. This morning, we are about to listen to your word. We ask for your Holy Spirit to please guide us. Make us understand your word, Lord God, and change our hearts together. Let it be, Lord, na ang iyong salita ang mangusap sa aming mga puso nang kami ay mabago at maging kaaya-aya sa iyong harapan. Thank you for your word today. Cover us with your most precious blood in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Minsan pa, sabihan mo yung katabi mo, magandang umaga sa iyo. As we are undergoing this quarantine, yung itong period na to, maraming bagay po akong na-realize. I have observed a lot of things. At uh, isa sa mga na-observe ko is that uh, God allowed us to walk our days on our own hands. Ano po ang ibig sabihin nito? In these days of silence, or shall we say for the most of us na hindi frontliners, Days of rest. No? Parang bigyan tayo ng Lord ng napakahabang pahinga. The days of silence or rest for the most of us becomes the test of faithfulness to our Lord Jesus Christ. Yan po yung aking naobserbahan na itong pahinga ay naging uh, um, avenue of a test for all of us to remain faithful to our God. Why? Why why did I say that? Because we have all the time that we 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 can do what we want in our homes. Lalo na po na nasa bahay po tayo, na comfortable po tayo sa kung ano ang gusto nating gawin, no? I consider it to be a secret place for all of us wherein you can be yourself. Uh, hindi ka na hindi kayo nagmi-meet sa cell group, walang Sunday service, walang pumupunta sa trabaho, walang routine na nangyayari sa iyo every day na nakasanayan mo na. So you are in your comfort zone. However, along with this freedom or along with this rest is the offer of relaxing and lowering our guard against any attacks of temptation. To dwell on things that are not pleasing before God. Or developing a lifestyle that would lead us sinning before God. Ganyan naman po kasi talaga yung kasalanan. Hindi po siya agad-agad dumarating sa atin. But it start with a lifestyle, a simple uh, routine. Na hindi naman siya kasalanan nung una. Pero uh, little by little, it leads us to sinning against God. We develop that certain character, we develop a certain attitude na hindi na kaaya-aya sa harap ng Panginoon. Later, if we will not be careful, yung mga lifestyle na to will lead us from our, uh, will lead us to our separation from the very presence of our Heavenly Father. Itong lifestyle na to will entangled us, okay? Uh, we become entangled with those uh, developed lifestyle na 
ang huli, we can no longer be back in a right path. Kasi nga na-develop mo eh. Nagkaroon ka nung uh, uh, napakahabang oras na i-develop yung ganyang klaseng lifestyle. Na hindi, hindi ka nagkaroon na, niyan noon. It's, it's just that it's crippled in into our, uh, into our uh, system ngayong uh, panahon ng pahinga. That's why I would like to encourage everyone na itong rest po na binigay ng Lord sa atin, hindi po talaga ito rest. We really have to be on guard and be careful with our daily lifestyle. O, paano po tayo namumuhay every day while we are in our homes? We should not lower down our guards. Why? No? Upon meditating this, na-realize ko that there is a certain story in the Bible that is very familiar to all of us na nagkaroon na din ng ganitong klaseng scenario, which is the story of Adam and Eve in the Garden of Eden. Alam natin na napakasarap ng buhay nila doon. Walang uh, problema, lahat provided for them. And then, uh, here comes the temptation. So, yun yung pag-aaralan natin this morning. Genesis chapter 3, verses 1 to 13. I will be reading from the New King James Version. If you have your Bibles with you, you can open it. Kahit hindi tayo kaparehas ng uh, translation, but uh, uh, ma- ma- makuha din po niya ninyo. From verse 1. Now, the serpent was more cunning than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said to the woman, Has God indeed said, You shall not eat of every tree of the garden? And the woman said to the serpent, We may eat the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God has said, You shall not eat it, nor shall you touch it, lest you die. Then the serpent said to the woman, You will not surely die. Parang narinig mo na yan, na no? You will not surely die. For God knows that in the day you eat of it, your eyes will be opened, and you will be like God knowing good and evil. So, when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree desirable to make one wise, she took off its fruit and ate. She also gave to her husband with her, And he ate. Then the eyes of both of them were opened. And they knew that they were naked. They sewed fig leaves together and made themselves coverings. I will put in that verse. Dahil ito title ko po ang mensaheng ito ngayong umaga from verse 7 which is cover up. Say it after me. Cover up. What they did, nung nakita nila that they are naked, nagkasala sila, kinain nila yung ipinagbabawal na pagkain, their eyes were opened. And what they did was, they made a clothes out from the fig leaves and made themselves coverings. And they heard the sound of God walking in the garden in a cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. They hid themselves from the presence of the Lord among the trees of the garden. Then the Lord God called to Adam and said to him, Where are you? Nasaan ka? He said, I heard your voice in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked 
and I hid myself. And he said, God said, who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree of which I commanded you that you should not eat? Then the man said, the woman whom you gave me, gave to be with me, she gave me of the tree and I ate. And the Lord God said to woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me, and I ate. Ang ganda po ng story ang ito. Marami po tayong lessons na makukuha dito sa pinakaunang kasalanang nagawa sa mundo. You know what? I will deal, be dealing with covering up our sins today. The danger with dwelling on sins, or shall I say, loving it, kasi minahal natin eh. No? That's our natural tendency actually. Mahalin yung kasalanan dahil uh, uh, our flesh is into it. Now, the danger of dwelling on it or loving it is its result to us. Yung result nito sa atin. Our natural tendency when we sin before God is to hide our shameful ways and cover up to maintain our outside appearance to people. But it eats up, it eats us up inside. Na, napakalungkot po ng ganitong senaryo. Lahat po tayo makakarelate dito. Ang nangyari kay Adam at saka kay Eve, nung nagkasala sila, nakita nila, nahubad sila. They were naked because the presence of God flew away from them. They were no longer covered by the presence of the Lord. Kaya ang ginawa nila, they covered themselves. Eh, minsan ganyan tayo. O hindi lang po minsan, most of the time. That's our tendency. We will cover up the wrongs that we have done. Paano natin ito cover up? We cover it up with good things. Di ba yung pagtahi nila ng kanilang damit? Para naman yun sa kanila. Para hindi sila makitang hubad. That's a good thing. But it's not the main thing. The main thing is their heart is already corrupted inside. Now, after they cover up their shameful ways, their shameful deed, they hid from God. Nagtago. They hid themselves. And after they hid themselves, tinalong sila ni Lord. Kinain nyo ba? Okay, nakita niyo yung scenario. Nung tinanong na sila ni Lord kung ginawa nila yung kasalanan, they blame each other. O, oh, ba? Parang ganyan din sa atin. So, this is uh, a very important message that is in need for all of us. Okay? This message was given to us by the Spirit of God to help us walk in freedom. In the freedom we receive from Jesus Christ. Hindi po ako exempted dito. Lahat po tayo ay tinuturuan ng salita ng Panginoon. But I would like, I would love to deliver this, this word this morning because this is what I have meditated for the entire week. I will give you some points Nag-research po ako about secret sins and about covering up the sins. I will give you some points this morning that indicates that you are covering up your sin. And I want you to assess yourself. Okay, lahat po tayo. No one is exempted. Let us assess ourselves kung anong klaseng lifestyle ang nai-develop mo in this quarantine time na Akala mo ay okay lang, pero yung pala will lead you into sinning against God. 
Here are the nine indications that you are covering up your sins. Number one, you start downplaying that sin. Let's go back to verse six. Nung kinausap, okay, kinausap ng serpent si Eve, sabi, ni, sabi ng serpent, hindi ka mamamatay. Actually, no, mag, mag-i-enjoy ka. And when the woman saw, tingnan nyo nung maigi, that the tree was good, wala pong i-offer ang enemy sa atin na bad. It's always good, good to the flesh. It was pleasant to the eyes and desirable to make one wise. Maging magaling. She took of its fruit and ate. Don't play with sin. You are covering it up when you start downplaying the sin. That is, you see your sins less than how scripture described it. Paano mo malalaman that you're down, down playing with, with the sin? Nakikita mo na yung bagay na yan, yung attitude na yan, yung character na yan, yung lifestyle na yan, as less how the scripture described it. Hindi naman ito ganito ka grabe. Hindi naman talaga ito masama. Okay? That's number one. So be very careful. For instance, no? Um, you threatened someone. Hindi naman. But alam mo ba that the Bible says na titingnan mo lang yung tao tapos may rage ka sa heart mo nagkasala ka na. So you even last, no, tiningnan mo lang yung lalaki o yung babae with the lustful look, you already committed adultery in the scripture. Now we have to be very careful. Maging maingat tayo dahil ang internet natin ay anjan lang. Okay? You are covering it up if you start downplaying the sin. Number two, you don't let others know your sin. Those who have the right to know. Okay? For instance, na for instance, nagkamali ka na dapat sinabi mo, bawa, nagnakaw ka, okay, sa nanay mo, or nag-cheat ka sa school, Tapos hindi mo sinabi sa teacher mo na dapat alam niya o dapat alam ng nanay mo na yan yung ginawa mo, pero hindi mo sinabi, then you are covering up your sins. Ay, for example, sabi ng nanay mo, umuwi ka ng alas jis, alas dos ka na umuwi. Tapos sinanong ka ng nanay mo kinaumagahan, na ano oras ka nagpuli, alas nuebe. You are covering it up. You don't let others know your sin who have the right to know. Tinatago mo, okay? That's covering up your sin. In verse 8, yan yung nangyari sa kanila, hindi ba? Balikan natin. They hid themselves. In verse 8, they hid themselves. They cover themselves. They cover their shameful ways. All right? I trust that we are getting something this morning. Number three, you worry more about what people would think than God, than what God thinks. Ulitin ko, you are covering up your sins if you worry more about what people would think than what God thinks. For example, for example, Sa church, alam natin dito sa church natin that we are restoring people na nagkamali sa harap ng Lord so that they will regain their confidence again in the presence of the Lord and will not be overcame by, by guilt. No? For example, nagkamali ka, sinabihan ka ng cell leader mo or you belong to the church ministry, you sin, kailangan mo ka munang alisin, and you are worried about what are the questions ng mga tao na itatanong, bakit wala ka? Bakit uh, hindi ka sumali doon? Okay, bakit hindi ka na nag ng cell? Bakit hindi ka na, di ba? If you are more worried about what people will ask you, then you are covering up your sins. Number four, 
you start lying. May kilala ka ba na taong alam mo na meron siyang ginawa pero gi cover up niya ng another tinikal? Or maybe once you were Yung tipong para matabunan yung nagawa mong kasalanan, kailangan mo gumawa ng panibagong storya, which is not true. That is covering up your sins. You're lying. Okay? If you start to lie again with 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 something to cover up that activity or to cover up that kind of lifestyle that you are in, then you are covering your sins. This is very dangerous. Number five, you start shifting the blame. Ito na yon. This is one of the indication that you are covering up your sins. When you start shifting the blame. For instance, yung lalaki, nagkaroon ng kabit, tapos ang sabi niya, nagawa ko lang naman ito kasi yung asawa ko ganito. Right? You're shifting the blame. Blaming O limbawa, uh, na, sinumbong ka sa nanay mo, ng kapatid mo. Tapos you blame your brother or you blame your sister for telling your mother your sin. You're shifting the blame. Ibig sabihin, in your heart, you're covering it up. Okay? Gusto mo yung ibang tao ang mapagbuntungan ng kasalanan mo. Kasi nga ayaw mong i-admit. That's covering up your sins. Like what did Adam? Okay? Did and Eve. Ang sabi ni Lord, Adam, ano nangyari sa'yo? Ang sabi ni Adam, eh kasi itong babaeng binigay mo sa akin. Okay? Hindi inadmit ni Adam una, or humingi man lang ng sorry, na ay Lord, sorry po, kumain po ako. In fact, it was Adam who had first handed by the Lord, handed the instruction. Okay? Siya yung unang binigyan ng instruction. Nung pagdating kay Eve, ang sabi naman ng Eve, eto, yung serpent kasi, dinisive niya ako. Okay? She shift the blame. Ang sabi naman ng serpent, kawawa naman ako. Mabuti pa yung serpent, ano? Hindi nag-blame. So, when you shifting the blame with that certain activity, then you are covering up your sins. Next, number six, you start attacking other people's character. Okay? Lalo na yung nag-confront sa'yo. You start questioning the motives of those who confront you. For example, sinabihan ka, o oh, ba dapat ganito? Tapos sasagutin mo, ikaw, ikaw man gani. Okay? You're questioning the motives of those who confront you. You're not focusing on, bakit niya sinabi sa akin yun? Okay? That's covering up your sins. Sa verse 13, makita natin, ang sabi ni Eve, yung serpent kasi, eto demonyo talaga to. Okay? Demonyo talaga yung serpent. You are attacking now the character of other people other than focusing on your mistake. You start saying that the person was always out to destroy you. Ikaw, gusto mo gid permi, abi, i-destroy gid ako. Diba? Ganyan tayo. Yung may term tayo sa ilonggo nang hindi bilatang magpatudlo. We are questioning the motive. You start telling people that the person who confronted you were not loving. Okay? Insensitive man gid abi na siya. Right? Okay? And, and etc. Okay? Okay, ginasa, ginasabi mo sa iba, but the, but the truth is, you want to cover up that mistake. You want to cover up that sin. Next, you say others have the have same sins too. You justify. Parang ganito, you caught up with something wrong. Then sinabi mo, bakit? Sila din naman, ginagawa din naman nila. You see? If that is your attitude, if that is your character, then you're covering up your sin. It's very dangerous. Ne next, two na lang, malapit na. You want people to give you self-pity instead of help to stop the sin. 
gusto mong mag-collect ng simpatiya. If you are doing like that, then you are covering up your sin. You want people to take your side to the point that you don't want people to speak to you about God's take on your sins. Okay, gusto mo, gusto mo makuha yung sympathy nila sa'yo to the point na hindi na madideal kung ano yung mali na nagawa mo. That's covering up your sins. And last, you have a worldly sorrow that leads to death. Yung parang umiyak ka, okay? Parang lumong-lumong ka dahil sa ginawa mo, hindi dahil nasaktan mo si Lord, kundi dahil napahiya ka. That's godly sorrow. You're, you are only thinking about yourself. Okay? Nagsiself-pity ka. That's worldly sorrow. That is not godly sorrow. Because godly sorrow is looking unto God and recognizing sa sarili mo na nasaktan mo si Lord. Hindi na ikaw yung nasaktan. Kundi nasaktan mo si Lord. Kaya lang naman tayo nasasaktan dahil nasasaktan natin si Lord. So if you have those things, those nine, then you're covering up something in your life. That's why I said kanina that we have to assess ourselves. All of us. Lahat tayo, let's discover, let us know kung ano ba yung lifestyle na meron tayo ni embrace natin ngayon that uh, if people will see it, if we will talk about it, takot tayo. Yung nine points na yun, lumalabas yun sa atin. Why am I telling this? Because there is a misery. Okay? The the Yung sinabi ko kanina, yung pinaka-grabe kasing mangyari dito, yung resulta sa atin ng kasalanan. The misery of sin. Charles Spurgeon says, Of all sinners, the man who makes a profession of religion and yet lives in iniquity is the most miserable. Ulitin ko po, Of all sinners, the man who makes a profession of religion, nagko-cover up. Ko-cover up ng good things, gumagawa ng magagandang bagay just to cover up the sin. Profession of religion and yet lives in iniquity is the most miserable. Mas maganda pa yung taong aamin, ah, o mo gid may batasan gid ko nga amo siniba, pasensya na. Kaysa sa itong nagapakita ka nga, hindi. Pero sa sulod mo, amo kagali sina. Okay? It's, it's a misery. That's a life of miserable. But you know what? There is a promise. There is a cure for that. Pinakita sa atin ng Panginoon kung gaano ka miserable yung pwede nating mapuntahan if we will not expose those kind of lifestyle and sin in our lives. Okay? Mawawala yung joy natin. Mawawala yung strength natin. Most especially, our confidence before God in our prayer time will be loose. Matatakot ka kung sasagutin ba ni Lord yung prayer mo dahil na alam mo in your heart that there is something wrong. But there is a promise when we confess it before the Lord. You know, it is for freedom that Christ set us free. In Psalm 32 verse 5, David said, Then I acknowledge my sin to you and did not cover up my iniquity. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord and you forgave the guilt of my sin. The only cure for this miserable kind of life, the religious way of living, is confession. Admit it. Assess yourself before the Word of God. Don't justify it to anybody. Just assess your heart. Then don't look to other people. Wag mong tingnan yung ibang tao. Just come before God, acknowledge it before the Lord, don't cover it up, 
and your guilt will be taken away from you. This is the promise of the Lord for us today. Okay? I don't know what you are doing at your homes. Hindi ko po alam kung ano pong ginagawa ninyo sa mga bahay ninyo. Hindi niyo rin po alam kung ano mga ginagawa namin dito. But God is there. He is looking at us. Noting every words, every actions that we are doing every day, especially those actions that no one can see, and letting us know that He loves us so. Maaring uh, kailangan mo ang salitang ito. Maaring nasa punto ka ngayon ng buhay mo na hindi mo alam kung paano ka makalabas dyan sa posisyon na meron ka that is uh, developing that certain lifestyle that blocking you out from the presence of God. You have to search your heart. How would you know kung ano yung lifestyle na yan? This is the last verse. In 1 John 3, 19-22. Napaka-powerful po ng salitang ito. 1 John 3, 19-22. And this is how we know that we belong to the truth and how we set our hearts at rest in His presence. Ito daw yung paraan kung paano malaman natin na nasa katotohanan tayo at mailagay natin yung mga puso natin at rest in His presence. Ibig sabihin, walang guilt, walang shame. If our hearts condemn us, we know that God is greater than our hearts and He knows everything. Ang puso mo, i-assess mo. Ang puso mo, ilatag mo kay Lord. And if your hearts condemns you, paano ka makakondemn ng heart mo? Sino ang dyan? Si Holy Spirit ang dyan. The Spirit of God is in our hearts. And He will always speak to us if there is something wrong. And the Word said, if our hearts condemn us, then we know that God is greater than our hearts. Ibig sabihin, kinakausap tayo ng Panginoon. Ibig sabihin, merong issue na dapat nating ayusin. And He knows everything. Now, what you are going to do is to listen. Listen to the Spirit of the Lord. Listen to God and assess your daily lifestyle. What is it? What is something in you right now that condemns you? That your heart condemns you? Okay? Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God. This is the result of a guiltless life. Kaya mo, na-expose mo yung puso mo sa Panginoon, at pag na-expose na yan, you uncover it, Place it before the hand of God, ask for forgiveness, and then you will regain your confidence before God. Dear friends, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence before God, at ito ang napakatindi, and receive from Him anything we ask because we keep His commands and do what pleases Him. I pray this morning na kung nasaktan man po yung mga puso natin sa salita ng Panginoon, we will come to our senses and humble ourselves before God asking for forgiveness. Mahal ka ng Lord. You are so important before God that He wanted to make you a person that He wanted you to be. And that is a person who will walk with Him day and night. With no shame, hindi magtatago, hindi magko-cover up, but walk with confidence in the presence of God and receive every blessings that God had prepared for each one of us. I love you. Mahal kita, kaya ko sinasabi ito. At mas mahal ka ng Diyos. Kaya niya binigay sa atin ang salitang ito ngayong umaga. I will pray. Let's pray together. 
let's go back to the presence of God. Let's dwell in the presence of the Lord and let the presence of God and the blood of Jesus cleanse us once more and start a brand new day with our Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord, that your blood washes every sins, our sins of yesterday, our sins of today, and our sins of the future. But God, you had given us the command to confess it before you so that we will be forgiven. Lord, humihingi po kami ng tawad sa lahat po ng na-develop na lifestyle na pag-uugali in this uh, quarantine period or maybe noon pa, ngayon lang na-expose that will lead us to be separated from your presence. Tulungan niyo po ang bawat isa sa amin. Allow us, O Lord God, to assess ourselves individually, personally, so that we can see and we will experience the confidence, we will experience, O Lord God, the grace, we will experience, Heavenly Father, the freedom that you have given us on that cross. Maraming maraming salamat po. Muli, Jesus, tinatanggap kita bilang Diyos at tagapagligtas ng aking buhay. Come, Lord, into my heart. Assess my heart. Search my heart. Know if there are wicked ways in me. And lead me to the ways everlasting. Allow me, Lord, to experience your presence this week. And allow me, O oh Lord God, to be confident and trust you in all your ways, in every way, in every day of my life. Maraming maraming salamat po in Jesus name. Amen and amen. Just continue bowing your head. I will pray for you. Panginoon, andito po kami. We humble ourselves before you and we are asking Lord God for your mercy. We plead for the blood of Jesus to wash us again and give us a renewed spirit. A heart, O oh Lord God, that is pleasing before you. Change us, Lord, like you had promised to Ezekiel, that you will remove from us the heart of stone and replace on us the heart of flesh. Let it be, O oh God, that starting today, we will be more careful with everything that we will do in our lives that is Lord God, that would please you. We will make it a goal to honor you. We will make it a goal to glorify your name. Bless everyone in every homes right now. I ask for your provision. I ask for your blood for protection. And I ask for salvation in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Maraming maraming salamat for being with us this morning. Please, please po, pagkatapos po nito, click like and then share para marami po ang maka-experience ng ating Sunday celebration. Ma-reach out din po natin yung mga tao na uh, hindi pa nakakilala sa Panginoon. Okay? Ulitin ko po. Like. Ayan, gawin mo na. And share. Right. Maraming maraming salamat. Bukas pa rin po ang aming accounts, ang FAGSIC, ang amin ni Pastor, to welcome every uh, uh, people who want to ask something from us. And if you need prayer, kung may mga prayer request ka, pwede nyo pong isend dito sa ating uh, account so that we could pray for you every Saturday. So our Saturday morning, 6.30, uh, join us in Zoom. No? Zoom po muna tayo ngayon sa prayer natin and enjoy the, the fellowship in prayer. Thank you. God bless you. See you again next Sunday.